Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. Look at what we have here in our shop. We had a customer bring us their Williams Space Mission pinball machine and they want us to fix it for them. So that's what we're going to do. Now this particular one has been already worked over. It's been gone through they cleaned all the switches and stuff and adjusted everything and uh, had it up and running 100%. 100%. They've done some cosmetic stuff to it and the thing is in great shape in my opinion. But with all that said, uh, the gentleman decided that he was going to trade it for another machine and he got a really cool deal going and then he went to play it and it wasn't quite right. So it's got a couple little issues we're going to see if we can troubleshoot for him to get the thing a little more solid where he can he can uh, trade it and feel as if he's uh, he's not um, sending somebody a machine that doesn't work 100%. So we're going to check it out. Now I'm going to play it first so that we can see what it's doing and make a list and then see if we can just go through the schematics and knock out the specific little things that it's doing. So I want to say right here at the beginning, though, if you do not have a space mission, but you're watching this to see if you can uh, get some advice on fixing yours, maybe you don't have a space mission, or maybe you don't have a Williams, or maybe you do have a Williams space mission, but yours isn't doing what this one's doing, well, videos like this can help you fix about any pinball machine because it's all similar stuff. What The, the way you really fix it isn't knowing how to... how you know, I've seen that problem before so I can knock it out. It's understanding the logic behind how the games work. If you understand and can figure out the logic behind how the games work, whatever problem pops up, you can fix. So watch along and hopefully by the end of the video we'll have the thing running 100% and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get through, uh, break it down to where you can understand why we're doing what we're doing and what it is that's... Uh, um, that's causing it to malfunction. So this particular one has been repainted and he did a really good job on it. He was uh, knocking in his uh, paint skills but I think it came out really nice. Looks very good. That game you're hearing in the back is a San Francisco Rush we've got turned on in the back that we're testing. Uh, but this, this uh, Machine looks good. It's got nice new legs on it. Looks like, or nice clean legs at least. It's got a really nice door on it. Nice shooter rod. The cabinet is in nice shape. The paint's been repainted, like I said. Looks good. Okay, let's check out the back glass. The back glass on these, uh, it had like a red. Um, let me darken this up so you can see the, how the red looks. I'm going to darken it for just a minute till about how it looks here to the naked eye. It looks about like that here in person. I'm looking at it and the viewfinder and it looks about the same. Um, but I can't film the whole thing like that because it, it makes everything else look dark. <laughs> but that is about how that looks here in person. Um, it is faded a little bit where it's um, it's it's just uh, that's something that happens with these space missions. There's another two player version of this called Space Odyssey. We've done videos, I think, of both of these. Uh, but this back glass here hasn't flaked too badly. It's a little faded. Like the reds have faded. And there is a little flaking here on some of the, the reds, or I don't know if that was orange originally. Right? Uh, and this gentleman has put LEDs in it behind some of them. So, for instance, behind that, um, I think it's the Suez capsule, uh, he's put some green LEDs to try to uh, mask that the art is flaking a little bit. And it's a pretty cool effect. You know, it looks pretty good. Um... And we've got, of course, red LEDs behind the space mission uh, because the, the red has pretty much faded away. So with the red LEDs, it makes it look more red. You know, good way to do it to uh, to make up for the faded paint. You can buy these back glasses new. They're about 
it's going to cost you probably three hundred dollars though, maybe a little bit more than that uh, with shipping. So I think I think they're about two fifty, maybe a little higher than that plus shipping. So you're going to be up over a little over three hundred dollars just for the glass. Ugh. Ugh. That gets expensive. So the back glass, I would say, you know, it's got flaking areas. It's probably a seven out of a ten. Um, but it doesn't look like it's flaking anymore. It looks like it's at least stable. And with the LEDs, um, and with it so clean, and the cabinet so clean, you know, it looks more like an 8 or a 9 out of a 10. Okay, so the play field on this particular one is in really damn nice shape. This guy gets them clean, man. I mean, this thing is nice. It looks good. There's a little bit of wear right here where the flippers were dragging. We'll check that to make sure they're not still dragging, but basically uh, when that bushing that holds the the uh, the shaft of the of the pinball uh, uh, what do they call it? the boot um, if that gets uh, worn or loose you will get problems where the actual tip of the flipper is digging into the play field so there's a little bit of that that's going on but it's negligible the rest of everything looks pretty good, man. I don't see much wear at all. There's a little bit right there that's been touched up. And it looks good. But it's been waxed, 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 waxed. And looks very clean. So this is a nice, original example that's been touched up a little bit. And uh, is about as good as they get. The plastics, if I was going to guess, I would say have been replaced at some point because they're just too nice. Like they're still clear. So see how the the, the plastic around the artwork is clear. It, the, when they're this old, this is from '75. When they're this old, they're always yellowed. So there's no way those are original. They're just too. They're too clean. So it's a nice game that's been worked on a little bit and uh, looks even better uh, after the cosmetic work. So, very cool. Okay, folks, so I'm going to show you some gameplay footage. And I want you to just watch it and see if you can figure out what is actually triggering it. And uh, to keep counting a thousand. And then see if you can uh, notice any context clues that might help us figure out why it's doing that. It's, it's always going to be something simple. It's going to be one little switch somewhere, but we just have to figure out uh, why it's doing it. So the, the, the most important thing is to figure out exactly what it's doing. If it's just scoring extra points all, all the time, well, that's not very specific. If you hit this target and it is always on the 5,000 when you hit this target and that's when it does it, well, that's very specific. If these two rollovers up here that says score swinging target value when lit, if you roll through those it's as, and they're lit, it's just as good as hitting this target. Huh? So I'm gonna I, I'm gonna I'm gonna play through it a little bit. This is fit, fit footage, obviously, that I shot earlier. I'm gonna play through it a little bit and just watch when it happens and why it happens, and then think about what must be going on here. All right, folks, we're gonna play it a little bit and see if I can get it to start screwing up. Yeah, now it's doing it. So it is just scoring over and over and over again. So that did, 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 that was it scoring a thousand points over and over again. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do it one more time and see if I can tell what's going on. I've noticed that every time it does it, the one thousand is lit on the swinging target. That one or that one. Okay, so we're back to zero, nothing scoring. This doesn't seem to be the flippers. Okay, still not doing it. When it 
hit that, it didn't, it didn't score. Which may be a clue. Also, we don't have any... There's no chimes. Okay, now it's doing it. Hear it. So it's just constantly... When I hit the swinging target, it's just constantly scoring now, and then it stopped. Um, hmm. Now it's doing it again. Now it's not. It's doing it again. Okay. So it Right now, it's just doing it nonstop. Okay, so that's what that's the main issue. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna take the glass off and see if we can do it by hand to figure out why it's doing that or when it's doing that, and uh, that'll be what we need to track down. And it stops eventually. <laughs> it's gonna be something really simple. It's one switch somewhere. Okay, so it's actually very clean inside as well. Um, sometimes you can't play a, a game like this with the play field up because there'll be something on the play field that will, like a ball will be captive or something and hit a switch and it makes stuff lock on. But this particular game you can lift up and actually play it with your hand no problem. So, um, I want to see about the bonus. So we're at 2,000. If I hit advanced bonus. 3,000, 4,000. Okay, all that seems to be working just fine. Now the target says target scores advance bonus and the lit value. So I think maybe that means I mean, I don't know if you get the bonus in the middle of the ball or if it just uh, advances the bonus. So we're going to hit the target, and I think that might cause our problems. We're at 22,250. Now we're at 23,250, so we scored our 1,000. And yeah, it did not, it did not uh, reset the bonus, so I guess that's how it's supposed to be. Okay, so when I moved from 5,000 to 1,000...
Mm. That is a strange one. Usually when you score, when, when something's locked on, what'll happen is it'll score half of the, 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 uh, the coil will pull in, the relay will pull in, and it'll stay stuck, and you'll hear it buzzing. This is actually continuously doing its thing, so <laughs> that's a weird one. I'm, I'm leaning towards something to do with this, uh, uh, they may call that the circle stepper or something, the, the wheel stepper or something. This stepper unit here, because look, when it got back there, it stopped again. When it was here, it gave us the problem. So I think there's something to do with this. Um, we've also got the A, B, and C that lights up. I wonder how you score that. that... Might have to read the instructions. It's gonna have something to do with this. So I'm gonna pull this all the way up so that we can look at that, that one uh, stepper unit and see what's going on with it. Okay, so there's this one stepper over here that has something to do with those middle lights. And then this one is the regular bonus unit, which is the bonus countdown at the end of uh, the ball. That one seems to be working fine, but I think there might be something going on with this one. So if you look, we're on the left 1000 light that we were looking at. So remember the play field on the left of the middle, there was a 1000 light. And again, if we're talking about repair, what we're trying to do is logically think about what the hell's going on. We're trying to figure out exactly when the problem pops up, under what circumstances does the problem pop up. Okay, so if I step this up, now this is a stepper unit that only has one coil on it, so you, it just goes one way. So basically that thing will keep turning um, is, is all that it will do, right? So it doesn't, it does, for, for, so for instance, this bonus unit has two because it will turn one way and then reset back the other way. This one though just moves in one direction. So if I pull that in, let's see what happens. Okay, so it steps the light one and I got a thousand points. It's another thousand points. Got some points. working just fine. Okay, so let's try doing it. I'm just going to hit the swinging target on the front. Okay, that worked. So when you hit it, it scores the points and you move one, one forward. By the way, the chimes are fine. They're just unplugged. No man, seems weird. Hmm. I don't know. Everything seems cool. I don't know why it would be doing that sometimes. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Five thousand relay. Okay. What have we here? This is uh, the swinging target relay. That's probably the one that whenever you hit it, it pulls in. Yeah. Okay. Super advanced relay. Doesn't do it. Advanced relay. Doesn't do it. The change relay. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How do we get the change relay to activate? Sometimes.
bear with me, people. We're going to figure it out. I need to get the change relay to come on. Okay, so I just hit the switch, and now the change relay has changed. So what does that do? Well, it, it makes like, sometimes you'll have a light that's lit on one side and it'll alternate. Sometimes they call it the alternating relay. It'll alternate the light from this side to this side, or, you know, if this is lit, it scores 100, but now this one's lit, so it scores 100. So it changes things back and forth. So with that on that side, maybe there'll be the problem. Nothing sticking, man. Everything's cool, man. Everything's cool. Okay. The C relay is pulled in. The B relay is pulled in. The A relay is pulled in. Hmm, I wonder if those pulling in causes the problem. All right, so we're going to end this ball. Okay, folks, so if you watch that footage closely, there's two clues of, of what's going on. It, it appears that it's doing it every time it scores 5,000 points. And it also appears that the score motor is moving the whole time. So if you listen, it's not just, uh, it's, it's not just doing 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. It's the score motor is moving down underneath, too. So uh, that's our that's our clue as to what's going on. Okay, so I'm looking at the schematics here online, and uh, let me zoom in a little bit. So these come with the machine, and then uh, you can get a lot of them on internet the internet pinball database. Okay, and so we're going to go down here to the bottom, and I'm going to show you how it normally works. So this is the thousand point relay. When that pulls in, that is what makes the thousand point. Um, uh, chime, chime, and it's what makes the score reel move on player one at this point. But so when that pulls in, there's a contact on it that will make uh, make the the uh, a switch close on the con on the relay, and it will make the score motor turn. Now, normally, what happens when you have something stuck is you will score a thousand points, okay, and it it will. It will stay stuck, and the reel will turn and just sit there. Or it, it, it won't even turn. You'll just hear it go, and it'll sit there and hum. Right. So if you have a stuck switch, that's usually what happens. This one isn't doing that. It's scoring and scoring and scoring and scoring. So something's stuck, but it's not the switch on the play field or anything. Okay. So I'll show you what I mean. So that thousand point relay has to pull in and then also release for the score to actually turn. So when it pulls in, it pulls the plunger back on the on the uh, on the uh, reel, but the reel doesn't actually move until the plunger goes back out. So it has to actually pull the plunger in and then release it to score a thousand points. And ours is doing that over and over and over again. So this thousand point relay has to pull in and release for you to score a thousand points. So that's what's happening because we're seeing it turn over and over again. Um, let me show you how a normal one would, would happen, okay? So how do you score a thousand points anyways? Well, one of the ways is if your hundred point drum unit, like on the first player or whichever player you're on, according to the player unit, right? If the hundred point drum unit is at the ninth position, so if it says 900 points, this switch will be closed, okay? And then the next time you score 100 points, it will close a switch that actually gives you 1,000 points. So that's one way that you get 1,000 points, is if you're at the ninth position uh, on the 100-point drum unit. So that's one way that you, that you uh, get 1,000 points. Now, when the 1,000-point relay pulls in, see this little switch here that says 1,000-point relay? It holds itself on until one of these four switches opens which is the end of stroke, the first player, 1,000 point, drum unit, end of stroke, switch, or the second player one, or the third player one, or the fourth player one. So basically it pulls in and it holds, 
this holds itself on until the uh, the plunger goes all the way in on the score reel and opens one of these switches, and then it no longer is holding itself on. Now, why does it do that? It's because uh, it, if there's the, whatever switch turns it on, if it just barely hits it, it may not be enough time for it to pull that plunger all the way in and turn the score reel. So it has to hold itself on until that happens and those, these switches open. So that's two of the ways that it gets power, right? So one of the other ways that it gets power is through this impulse uh, uh, piece on the motor. If the ball index relay is on and the double re relay, the double bonus relay uh, hasn't been tripped, then blah 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 through the bonus relay. So that's that's all with how the bonus counts. Well, it's not the bonus that's giving us the problem. It's when it scores 5,000 points. So here is how that is going down. The swinging target unit, okay? So that's that middle switch. If it's in position 1, 4, 7, or 10, you it turns on the 5,000-point relay. If it's in positions two, three, five, six, eight, or nine, it turns on the thousand point relay. Okay? We seem to be having the problem when it's trying to score five thousand points. So how does it score it? Well, when you hit the switch, um basically swinging target step up unit in the stroke switch. When you hit the switch, it pulls in a relay, which uh, makes the tar swinging target step up unit work, which makes this these switches close. Okay, which gives you either a thousand points or five thousand points wherever you're connected. All right. So what appears to be happening is we're getting five thousand points. The five thousand point relay is pulling in. So this switch here connects, which is what gives you the 1,000 points. And that switch is connected through this impulse cam on the motor, the score motor. So an impulse cam is one that's not, no the switch is not normally connected, but there are five little bumps on it. So as the score motor turns over, it goes bump, 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 bump. And each time it pulses through the 5,000 point relay um, the thousand point relay. Okay, so you understand what I'm saying? So you get a thousand points when this pulls in. If the five thousand point relay is on and that impulse thing is moving, you get that hits five times, which makes the thousand point relay fire five times. Okay, so the, the, the 5,000 point relay pulls in, which turns on the score motor and gets it to start moving. Okay, Now that it's turned on, this switch is closed. The 5,000 point relay, this switch is closed. Right? Which gives you 1,000 points over and over and over again. But what must be going on is the 5,000 point relay isn't turning off. If that were to pull in and just stay on, um, this switch would always be connected. With the 5,000 point relay on, the score motor would always run, which would mean that this would continuously bum, 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 and that's exactly what's happening. So the 5,000 point relay isn't turning off. So how does it turn off? So it's turned on by the 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 swinging target step up unit end to stroke switch, blah, 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 blah. And then it holds itself on through a switch on itself until this switch opens up. <laughs> right? So it, it's the same thing. It, it turns itself on. It holds itself on with a switch on itself. And why does it do that? It's because this end of stroke switch is no longer turning it on. So that turns it on, but then as soon as the swinging target step up unit end of stroke switch opens back up, it would make that fall off. But we need it to hold on long enough for it to score five impulses okay so it holds itself on through a switch that is normally connected here that should at some point turn itself off right 
So this is the, the motor, one of the, the cams or whatever. It should go that way eventually at some point, which would kill power to it. But that's not happening. So if this switch were permanently connected, the 5,000 point relay wouldn't come on because it's off. So if it's off, it can't get power through that. But if you were to ever turn it on, it would now be able to draw power through that and would stay on because that switch never opens. Right? Now, maybe that switch isn't like all the way smashed shut. Maybe it like opens every once in a while and some of the time it doesn't, but something about that switch is not adjusted right. So it says MB5A, whatever that means. So I think if we go over here to, this is the score motor uh, cams. So it's showing you the fifth cam, see the A there? It says 50 point and 5,000 relay lock. So it is on until it turns around and it falls into one of those little holes, which will make it drop out and turn itself off. That ain't happening. So we need to go look at that switch, and it could be that one switch is the whole freaking problem. So I'll go look in the machine, and we'll see if we can find it. It has an orange and blue wire going to it, a yellow wire, and a green and yellow wire. <laughs> Just another quick note here too, uh, if you look, that also goes to the 50 point relay. So if you score 50 points, it would also make the, the 50 points uh, lock on. And then it also connects up here to the super advanced relay. Okay, so we should be able to, if we just hit the 5,000 point relay, that should from time to time, screw up. Yep. See how it ran twice? Should only ran once. Three, four, so it ran four times that time. Uh, and this one is the 50 point relay. If it is that switch, then this one will probably do the same thing. It is not that switch. The 50 point one only does it once, so the 5000 one. Okay, so it does it more than once. Hmm. Hmm. It could actually be the. Uh... Okay, you're gonna love this. Watch what happens when I push, the game's turned off. Watch what happens when I push in the 5,000 point relay. Did you catch that? The damn thing's stuck. It will stick sometimes. So it's literally the relay. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this little armature off and we're gonna clean everything and put it back together and that hopefully will fix the problem. Okay, there doesn't seem to be anything obviously wrong with it. I cleaned it up a little bit. Just to make sure, but I mean the thing basically looks pretty much brand new. So I'll uh, I'm gonna put it all back together and keep messing with it until it doesn't stick. <laughs> that it's not a, mag a magnetized thing either. Whenever you touch it to the the coil, it um, it doesn't stick. So it's just some kind of binding where it grabs it or something. I don't know. We're gonna keep messing with it though. But I think we're down. I think we've about figured it out. Okay, so I just cleaned everything, all the, 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 cleaned the surface of the coil, took it out, everything looked cool, cleaned the back surface of that, you saw that, I took this off and put it back, put the spring on, took the spring off, put it back. And now, it doesn't seem to ever stick. So, We'll try turning it on, starting a game, and seeing if uh, if the uh, score motor only turns around once. What do you think? There's no ball in it, but it should, it should do its thing. 
Okay, we have reset. I only turned around once. Might have fixed it. Might have fixed it. Okay, so I'm going to drop the playfield down and we'll play it a little bit and see if we fix it. Okay, folks, so we'll play it a little bit. We're just trying to see if it ever locks on. Okay, I'm, I've already got 45,000 points from us just hitting the thing. You can't really hear too much what's going on because you don't have the benefit of the chimes because they're unplugged. Look, it's at 5,000. Well, I looked into earlier whenever it didn't score over here too. Sometimes it can go down and just not hit the metal, the, the little switch, that's part of it. And then also on one of them, the special was lit, which is you win an extra ball, and I already had an extra ball activated. So. See the top where they say swing, score is swinging target value when lit? That one right there. So that just scored 5,000 points when I went through that. And it did not lock on, so I think we may uh, have fixed it. It was some kind of just physical mechanical uh, Rolling 5,000 again on the swinging target. I missed. Oh! I went through the horseshoe twice. All right. Seems cool. Let's try one more game just to make sure. We're at zero. We're on 5,000. All right, so we scored our 5,000 and it did not keep going. And we're still, we're on 5,000 again. So just scored our 5,000 again and it did not keep going. I'm calling that fixed. We have a, a limp flipper, people. <laughs> he mentioned that when he brought it in. All right, I'm not gonna play it with a messed up flipper. Okay. All right, so I think that's that. A uh, couple little things I'll mention just because uh, uh, while I'm thinking about them. You may have noticed like the little light blinking there. 
I think that's an LED thing. Sometimes if you put an LED in uh, certain games, there's a little bit of, uh, of current that a regular light bulb won't illuminate from, but an LED will do weird stuff like that. So it may be because of the LED. Uh, so that's one. Two, the uh, flipper, he, he was telling me that he adjusted it, but he didn't get the he didn't get it lined up just right and didn't get the uh, the um, little set screws tight. So he wanted me to mess with that a little bit, which we will. It flops around a little bit, but we'll get that. Uh, so I got to do that. Uh, I was, I'll talk to you about that switch. It's cool. Um, and the chimes, we need to plug in the chimes. But I think everything's, a, everything's pretty cool. So moral of the story. If you have a, a problem with the machine, you need to figure out exactly what it's doing. So once we figured out that it was every time it scores 5,000 points, well, then you know where to look. We thought it was going to be the switch on the score motor, but we were able to test that it wasn't because it didn't do it when you hit the 50-point relay. So it would have done it with, with both of them if that, was, if that switch was the problem. Uh, so it ended up just being literally the relay physically sticking together. You saw when I got it to stick together that one time. Um, so I think that's it. So, but we'll do some more little minor stuff and then I'll film a video of us playing it and everything so that you can, uh, you can experience the full mission of space. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. Um, make sure to, uh, 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 check out our brother channel, my brother Donnie. If you don't know about that, my, he's literally my brother. My brother Donnie has a channel here on YouTube. Uh, that I'm on often, and we uh, we have been working on this old, rundown, dilapidated little tiny grocery store that we bought in this little tiny town near here. Very inexpensive people. We're not rich. We just bought a, a little building and are fixing it up and renting it out. So uh, make sure to check that out if you haven't. My brother Donnie, and we'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links. If you don't know about that, we have uh, some links down below to Amazon if you're considering purchasing something on Amazon. If you click our link first, it gives us a little tip for sending you there. And also, we have a new page on our website. If you go to lionsarcade.com slash parts, it's at the top of all of the pages at lionsarcade.com. Lions is our last name, by the way, if you didn't know. If you go to lionsarcade.com, at the top, go to parts, and we have a, a listing of all of the stuff that we use on our machines, so like the, the um, synthetic grease that we use on the pinball machines, the, the, um, some of the tools that we like to use, and things like that. So you might see something on there that you're interested in, and we also have links to our t-shirts, and our coffee mugs, and our, we've got some canvas prints we're doing now, and stuff like that. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, go check it out on our website at lionsarcade.com. Leave your comments below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll do it, like I said, I'll do another video of us playing it and everything a little more in depth so that you can see what the game's all about. We'll see you on the next video.